Thank you very much. Yeah, I suppose save it up for the end, we'll see. Um, thank you very much for introduction. Um, I'm Adriana Lucas, and I live in London, and I love networks. Well, anyone who actually lives in London cannot possibly love the London underground. But I do research networks, namely particular kinds of networks. Such networks are special, as they have no center that controls what happens within the network. So today, I want to put a bug in your head. I want you to ask a what if question. I may not have time to do more, but I have enough to point you in an interesting direction. I believe the internet gives us a hint about organizations and structures. In my opinion, it's been a pretty big hint, which we are not seeing because we are stuck in certain mental models. But let me start at the beginning. I used to be a disruptor, which means I used to disrupt corporate organizations for living. Some of my friends used to call me by another name. I must attribute this marvelous term to Mark Cantor, a man of many talents. The reason for that uh, is because I often had to fix what consultants broke. And I myself broke too many rules to qualify as one. The important part of what I did was based on the understanding that my loyalty was to the people I worked with, not the business. That was their job. Another understanding was also that no pain, no gain applies to corporate organizations too. And when it comes to change, most companies fall into a trap of their own devising. Over time, they create policies, rules, processes to make things easier, but soon these become constraints and bottlenecks. My motto was, I respect your rules, I just won't play by them. What does that mean? Rules have rationale, often good and sensible ones, but long forgotten. And I take care to know and understand those reasons, but when changing things in an organization, using existing processes negates any attempts at real change. Because often it is the same processes that have made the organization dysfunctional in the first place. So any change will have to be under the radar to avoid getting caught in organizational bottlenecks. And the big change starts from lower down. It works. It gets things done. It changes people, but by extension, bits of the organization. In short, the disruption is doing things by bypassing established pathways, making things happen that would otherwise seem impossible. By demonstrating that change is possible, it draws out people who still have desire for it. So far, so good. Change is happening, unnoticed at first. Momentum gathering, first successes are getting noticed higher. Then, the middle management wants a piece of that action. And in embracing the results of the change, they introduce policies, rules, processes, and they smother it. Why such a gruesome story? Because the nature of the beast doesn't change. But what if there is something else? This is what I decided to investigate instead of being content with disrupting with status quo. What if some big, bigger guns are available for organizational change? But first, we need to look at hierarchies. Let's talk about, um, not in systems theory terms, but as a, a few helpful ways how to think about corporate organizations as hierarchies. One way is obvious. Structurally, a hierarchy is a network with no peer connections. 
Each node is connected only to a node above and below. Ah, but I hear you say, I can certainly deal with my colleagues at the same level in another department. Of course you can. After all, it would be unworkable to go through the line of management up and down again each time you want to interact with someone at your level in another department. So there is a solution to this, a shortcut. You can see where I'm going with this. A process replaces permission needed for interaction each time, making it possible for a hierarchical organization to function day to day. Another way to think of a corporate um, or any hierarchy is that the individual is always subject to the system. Surely that is the whole point of organizations, I hear you cry again. We are social beings, and as such, part of a collective, right? Perhaps, and indeed, but the truth remains that this makes hierarchies singularly ineffective at empowering individuals, with the individual being defined as an element of the system. Individual autonomy within a hierarchy is non-existent. And all authority and power to act is derived from position in the system. Even CEO, and in some organizations, especially the CEO, cannot act on their own terms. They merely execute the priorities of the system. Yes, and that is their job. No surprises there. So any organization is a hierarchy, whether you like it or not. Trying to change it results in a different kind of hierarchy. Or whether you tweak it for better or not, it still remains a hierarchy, perhaps a nicer one for the individual throughout the ages with various checks and balances, but still a hierarchy. Let me give you an example. It goes deeper than that. Put a group of people in a room, meeting, gathering. Leave them there long enough and you will get a hierarchy. Some say humans are hard, hardwired this way. But what if we could change the way we arrange our organizations and rewire that hierarchical behavior? A simple example of dynamics of meetings. Put people into an auditorium or a lecture room, with the hardwired division between the speaker and the audience, them, the speakers, us, audience, or vice versa, there will be little or no discussion with predetermined direction of information flow. No arguments, no conversations. Change the layout to a circle or disperse people into groups or get them online, the division disappears and people interact in ways that were thought impossible especially by people organizing events in auditoriums. When it comes to organization, corporate or otherwise, we've only ever experienced the lecture room. We had no alternatives. I have seen it work in events with the same people. This is not new. Same, same people, differently organized, different behavior. We know that works. Ta or take the internet. Give a network the ability to go around an obstacle and billions of connections bloom. Take away the center and you get a network with scale and resilience beyond imagination. What if the Internet's architecture offers a key to an organization alternative to a hierarchy? What if there are principles, conditions or even laws that can help establish and maintain a genuinely non-hierarchical organization? Like the law of gravity and the power to weight ratio, without their knowledge, flying seemed impossible. And a genius like da Vinci was reduced to flapping artificial wings, mimicking flight of birds. Without understanding the laws of distributed networks, also known as heterarchies, we are reduced to flapping the artificial wings of business and organizational theory and live in the expectation of evolving hierarchy into something better for us as individuals. I believe there are such laws. So far, I have identified five of them. But that's another talk and a work in progress. 
Ultimately, I am not talking about revolutions, but about laws of organizational physics based on different principles to what we now regard as the standard systems of organizational theory, which in due course would bring its own revolutionary outcome, just like the internet. Let me talk about some challenges and some assumptions behind that. There's quite a few. Um, an impressive and respectable lineup of people is already talking about and implementing networks in organizations, companies, or other social institutions. I believe the magic of networks can work within hierarchies too. It's just unstable and fragile. But network is not a network unless it's a network. Why is this important? Because peer-to-peer -peer networks dissolve hierarchies. Anyone using um, BitTorrent or any other distributed technology will be familiar with that. But people have different differing images of networks. When you say the word network, different people imagine different things. Most think hub and spokes, bicycle wheel, they are the center of it. Um, some can stretch to a telephone network, which is hierarchical in itself, or tra a traffic network. But there's always an assumption of a commanding center of some kind. So I talk about heterarchy as a network where each node is or can be connected with another without central coordination, which is a genuine alternative to a hierarchical approach worth researching deeper. Another challenge is scarcity. Unlike the virtual world, the physical world is defined by lack of resource, or resources, um, and this is the crux of it. Where there is scarcity, hierarchies follow because they are the most efficient system of distribution we have at distributing scarce resources. It works. That's why they're everywhere. And where there is hierarchy, artificial scarcity follows. Think of otherwise abundant information becoming a scarce resource within a corporate organization. Yet another challenge are the reasons we give ourselves for hierarchies persisting as the common organizational structure. I call these soft explanations. Psychological explanation, people need security and certainties that hierarchies provide. Human evolution favored hierarchies because they optimize survival and efficient distribution of resources, the anthropological voice. And societies and the institutions evolved that way for social, political reasons, et cetera, et cetera, sociological explanations. But what if there are structural ones? Because all those explanations, soft ones, may be true, but what if there is more to it? It would mean that hierarchies may not be inevitable, and we don't have to resign ourselves to hardwiring um, in our minds. The final challenge is personal. It is to articulate and explain the laws of heterarchy and help people to understand them. Not everyone, not everyone is my audience, um, but it's those people who see hierarchical organizations as unsuitable for individual autonomy, which is what I understand by fundamentally flawed. Those people who have reached limits in their fields of expertise and those people who want to design and build things, whether it's organizations or technology, applying the heterarchy laws. Because this, only this will help to shift mental models. Same way the internet has shifted so many already. We wouldn't be here after all if that were not the case. Thank you.